again and welcome back to the Story Shack with me, Kath, and Sloppy the Rabbit. Now today we have a story from Ukraine. It's got a very funny title. It's called How the Fish Swam in the Air and the Hare in the Water. But all will become clear. So if you're sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. Once upon a time, an old man and his wife lived together in a little village. Now, they might have been happy if only the old woman had the sense to hold her tongue at proper times. But anything that might happen indoors or any bit of news at all, which her husband might bring in when he'd been anywhere, had to be told at once to the whole village. And these tales were repeated and repeated and altered until it often happened that much mischief was made and the old man's back paid for it. One day, he drove to the forest and when he reached the edge of it he got out of his cart and he walked along beside it and suddenly he stepped on such a soft spot that his foot sank into the earth. Oh, what could this be? he thought. I'll dig a little bit and see. So he dug and he dug and he dug and at last he came to a little pot and in that little pot it was full of silver and gold. What luck! Now, if only I knew how I could take this treasure home with me. I can't hope to hide it from my wife. Once she knows, she'll tell the whole world about it. And then I'll get into trouble again. So he sat down and he thought over the matter for a very long time. And at last, he made a plan. He covered up the pot again with earth and twigs. And he drove on into the town where he bought a live pike fish and a live hare in the market. And then he drove back to the forest and he hung the pike up at the very top of a tree and he tied up the hare in a fishing net and he fastened it on the edge of a little stream, not troubling himself to think how unpleasant such a wet spot was likely to be for the hare. But anyway, then he got into his cart and he trotted merrily home. Wife, wifey, cried he, the moment he got indoors. You can't think what a piece of good luck has just come our way. <gasps> what? What? Dear husband, do tell me all about it at once. Oh, no, no, no. You'll just go off and tell everyone. <gasps> no, 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 I won't. No, no. How could you think such a thing? For shame. If you like, I'll swear never to. Oh, well, if you really want me to tell you then. OK, well, now listen. And he whispered in her ear. So why didn't you bring it back? Well, because we'll drive there together and we'll bring it carefully back between us. It's so big, I couldn't carry it by myself. So the man and his wife drove off to the forest. As they were driving along, the man said, Oh, what strange things you hear, you know. I was told only the other day that fish will now live and thrive in the treetops and that some wild animals spend their time in the water. <laughs> well, well, times are certainly changing. Oh, you must be crazy, husband. Dear, dear, what nonsense people do talk sometimes. Who have you been listening to anyway? Nonsense indeed. Why, just look, bless my soul, if there isn't a fish. There's a real pike, I do believe, up in that tree, look. Good gracious, cried his wife. How did a pike get there? It is a pike. You needn't attempt to say it's not. Can people have said the truth? But the man only shook his head and shrugged his shoulders and opened his mouth and gaped as if he really couldn't believe his own eyes. So what are you standing staring out there, stupid? said his wife. Climb up the tree quick and catch the pike and we'll cook it for dinner. So the man climbed up the tree and he brought down the pike and they drove along. When they got to the stream, he drew up the cart. Oh, now what are you staring at again? asked his wife impatiently. Drive on, can't you? Well, I, th I think I can see something moving in that net. Um, I think I'll just go and see what it is. So he ran over to it and when he'd looked in it, he called to his wife. Just look at this. There's actually a four-footed creature caught in the net. I do believe it's a hare. 
good heavens, cried his wife. How did the hare get into your net? It is a hare, so you needn't say it isn't after all. People must have said the truth then. But her husband only shook his head and shrugged his shoulders as if he couldn't believe his own eyes. Now what are you standing there for, stupid? cried his wife. Take up the hare. A nice fat hare is a dinner for a feast day. Oh, don't listen to that bit, sloppy. The old man caught up the hare and they drove on to the place where the treasure was buried. And they swept the twigs away, dug up the earth and took out the pot and they drove home again with it. And now the old couple had plenty of money and they were cheery and comfortable. But the wife was really foolish. And every day she asked a lot of people to dinner and feasted them until her husband grew quite impatient. He tried to reason with her, but she would not listen. You've got no right to lecture me, she said. We found the treasure together, so we'll spend it together. Her husband took patience, but in the end he said to her, look, you do as you please, but I shan't give you another penny. The old woman was very angry. Oh, what a good for nothing fellow to want to spend all the money himself. Just you wait and see what I do about that. And off she went to the governor to complain about her husband. Oh, my Lord, protect me from my husband, she said. Ever since he found that treasure, there's no bearing him. All he does is eat and drink. He won't work and he keeps all the money to himself. Now the governor took pity on the woman and he ordered his chief secretary to look into the matter. The secretary called the elders of the village together and they all went with them to the man's house. The governor, said he, desires you to give all that treasure you found into my care. The man just shrugged his shoulders and he said, what treasure? I don't know anything about any treasure. What? You know nothing? Why, your wife has complained to you and she's complained to us about you. Don't tell lies. If you don't hand over that money at once, you'll be tried for daring to raise treasure without giving due notice to the governor about it. Pardon me, your excellency, but what sort of treasure was it supposed to have been? My wife must have dreamt about it and you gentlemen have just listened to her nonsense, I'm afraid. Nonsense indeed, broke in the wife. A kettle full of gold and silver? Do you call that nonsense? Look, you're not in your right mind, dear wife. Oh, sir, I beg your pardon. Why don't you just ask her how it all happened? And if she convinces you, then I'll pay for it with my life. Right, well, this is how it happened, Mr Secretary, called the wife. So we were driving through the forest, right? And we saw that pike at the top of the tree. Uh, a what? Uh, you know, the pike at the top of the tree. A pike, said the secretary. Like a fish at the top of a tree. Yeah, the, you know, the pike at the top of the tree. Oh, madam, do you think you can joke with me? I'm not joking, Mr. Secretary. I'm speaking the bare truth. Honestly. Now listen. Now you see, gentlemen, said her husband, how far you can trust her when she chatters on like this. You know, she can chatter. She's always doing it. Chatter indeed! Ha! Me! Look, perhaps you've forgotten too how we found that hare swimming in the river, remember? Everyone roared with laughter. Even the secretary smiled and he stroked his beard. And the man said, Come, come, wife. Everybody's laughing at you. Look, you can see for yourself, gentlemen, how far you can actually believe her once she starts talking. Yes, indeed, said the village elders, knowing what she was like. It's certainly the first time we've heard that hares can thrive in the water and fish can swim in the treetops. Oh, dear me, dear me. And the secretary could make nothing of it all and he drove back to the town. The old woman was so laughed at that she had to hold her tongue and obey her husband ever after. And the man bought things with part of the treasure and he moved into town where he opened a shop and he prospered and then he spent the rest of his days in peace. See you next time.